to the path of my being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah I'm calling your name Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to an all new episode of Let's Talk. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. Now, I know we haven't seen each other for quite some time, about two months since the month of Ramadan. So, we're quite excited to do this all new episode of Let's Talk. So, I'm going to start off by welcoming my guest to this program. On my right hand side, uh, uh, brother, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Thanks Abdullah sir. Amir. I'm a graduate from Azhar University, 25 years old. Mm-hmm. All right, Abdullah. I think this is your first time uh, with me on Let's Talk here. Yes. Yes. Uh, pleasure, so sure. we're looking forward for this. Uh, and Abdullah, what do you do for a living? I'm an English trainer. Okay, I teach okay. English and I teach some other like soft skills. All stuff. right, that's that's uh, perfect because our episode is about going back <laughs> to school and the new exactly. school year. So we got some teachers on. Uh, brother, if you can introduce yourself to the viewers. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> uh, my name is Ahmed. I'm 25 years old. I'm Egyptian and I'm a uh, teacher. Okay, another teacher. Uh, I, I know you've been on uh, on the show before many times, and you know mm-hmm. uh, we've had many conversations here on Let's yeah. Talk. So it's wonderful to have you back. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And two teachers here. Let's find out on this side. <laughs> uh, go ahead, brother. If you can introduce yourself to the viewers. Assalamu alaikum My, name's Allah. my name's Ilyas Townsend. I'm um, hoping to start as hard, and I'm also a teacher. So <laughs> okay, that's it. Three, three. One more, brother. <laughs> go ahead, introduce yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Right, uh, my name is Bilal Abdullah, 36 years old, originally from the United States, the great state of Indiana. Um, living in Egypt, married to an Egyptian. I'm a teacher uh, at Rawad American College. Okay, that's uh, that's very interesting. This program will be interesting, inshallah. We have four teachers, and uh, all of them are going to share their opinions and their ideas about starting mm-hmm. the new school year. So, Abdullah, if I can start with you. Uh, Abdullah, as a teacher, what do you feel when the new year approaches? Um, I'm not teaching like elementary school, like mm-hmm. in, in colleges. I teach like in, in, in centers. I teach like free freelancing. So basically, like um, people are like just so I don't know, so motivated when they come. Like ah, oh, like some some of them like oh, they hate school for sure, but yeah. the others like you know they they're so well like kind of uh, prepared and motivated, and they they want to come and like take something they want to learn. So for sure, what we feel the same. Like we feel also motivated. We feel like you know we have this is like the season of teachers like we you know we get lots of students and like lots of lots of money lots of time lots of like you know tiring and like all these things so like we feel so happy we feel like so energetic I, I love teaching it, it depends on the person I, it's like a passion for me mm-hmm. I love dealing with people getting you know more people getting you know, more students changing their lives into better like things so like I feel like so I mean excited for this all right that's good to hear uh, brother if we can get your ideas on it. How do you feel when the new school year well, approaches? Well, <coughs> I'm a kid a little bit like uh, like my brother Abdullah. I'm, uh, I work as a trainer basically, but uh, at the beginning of uh, every school year, the you know the students are kind of um, <coughs> happy and at the same they have mixed feelings. I'm happy because I'm back to school. I'll see my friends and stuff, but at the same time, uh, I, I can feel a lot of pressure on me mm-hmm. because I want to get a uh, high score to. Uh, you know, to, to, to make my, my parents proud of me and at the same time for me to be proud of myself and to be satisfied. Uh, and at the same time, <coughs> uh, for the people who are in, uh, in, uh, in a crucial stage, for, for example, joining the faculty in, in, uh, in high school, uh, you can imagine a lot of pressure at home for, every, for all the members of the family. Uh, no TV, no computer, no internet. Only you study because uh, I, I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be an engineer and stuff. You know, so uh, it's uh, between happiness and uh, and pressure. And you know, we have to be well prepared for this year. Mm, that's quite interesting. That's a very interesting input you put there, uh, Elias. If I can come over to you, what's your thoughts on the new year as it approaches? Um, I believe for for our teach adults. Mm-hmm. So there's no concept of year or. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, when I was in London, <coughs> the new year was starting when I was teaching in, in, in London. Um, a lot of the children just didn't actually want to be there. <laughs> they didn't want to be in school. You know, they were enjoying their holidays. And um, so some of them were a bit down. Um, but it depends on the age group. I mean, when you get a bit older, then this, as our brother Ahmed mentioned, it gets a bit, the pressure starts to build up, especially mm-hmm. around the age of 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Every year is crucial. 
So, um, yeah, I'd just like to really reinforce what Ahmed said. Just some happiness, some sadness, but as you get a bit older, then you start to feel the pressure start to build up. So, uh, so far, I mean, all three of you guys, it seems like you've worked with adults mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brother Bilal, if I can ask you, do you work with adults or children? My background is teaching with both adults and children. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I'm teaching children at the uh, kindergarten age. Okay, that's perfect. So let's get some of your input into this situation here. But the biggest thing for me is um, getting to know the children. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the biggest thing between it, the, the students and the teacher is being comfortable, introducing yourself, and um, the students must be confident that this is a good teacher and that he's likable and, and, you know, that they respect him. Also for the parents. It's very important for the parents to, to, to look and see Okay, is this guy qualified? Will he be a good teacher? I don't know. And also for your, for my fellow colleagues, because I'm working at a, at a new school this year, so I have co-teachers, I have a boss, obviously, and other people who are teaching other subjects around me. So it's really important to become a part of the team and 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 mesh in well with everyone, so that we can do the best for the children. Hmm. That's uh, very interesting. Now I want to take you guys a couple of years back, say about ten years back, as students yourself. Uh, when you guys were in school, uh, maybe maybe more than ten years for some of us. <laughs> uh, but let's let's go into the past and try to remember how we used to feel when school approached, and what were good ways that we used to prepare for the school year, and what were good ways to start off the school year. Uh, so let's start with uh, Abdullah. I was like, we were. I don't know. There was a habit. I think in, in like young Egyptians, like you know, children, mm -hmm. we sleep with like. School like Uniform? dress code. Yes, <laughs> we sleep with it. So prepared, like you know, our like new stuff. It's always like new things. Everything is new. Like you know, your your like shirt, your pants, your socks, everything. Like you, everything you have is like new. Mm -hmm. And your notebooks and like your bag and everything is new. Like you just like. You can smell it. I mean, like yeah. <laughs> everything is new. Like you can, like you can, you can kill yourself by like, the new smell you have. <laughs> yes, everything is new. And like at the same time, like we feel like so happy and like all these things. Till the time they woke us like up, like you know, for school, like <laughs> six a.m. or something to get ready and all these things and just hassle at home. I don't know what happened, but like Egyptian homes, they're so loud at, in the morning. I mean, like everyone wants like to wake up. Everyone at the same time, like get everyone wants to get ready. At the same time, like you know, parents they they, they get lost in the middle, like you know, they, they sleep here, like they they woke us, like you know, they put us like into the bathroom, go go with your face, just like sleeping, still sleeping. <laughs> um, it was a really nice time, like you know, no worries, relaxing. You just go like see your friends, uh, check new things, do new things, fights on the first day, <laughs> going back like you know with I don't know bruises and other stuff. It was really nice. I love. It. I miss it. Yes, it's like no worries. <laughs> um, if they had cell phones back in the day, you would have seen him on uh, YouTube <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Selfie. Um, but if we can ask you, uh, how well, was it for you? In actually, my experience with the first day is not that good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Different from you, totally. I always got a headache. Uh, and, uh, he was the one getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> and he, had old, he had our old clothes. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is that I, you know, I, I used to to, uh, to to wake up late uh, in the afternoon. So you, you're well. supposed to wake uh, after the, you know you, you pray the dawn with your father, and then you yeah. stay up till you go to school. So that was not good for me, and uh, because of that, I always got the headache. And um, uh, there. The teachers come, in, come into the class and every teacher, okay, I'm going to teach you, blah, blah, blah. And they want you to get me to, uh, for example, the, the, the book, uh, Note to notebooks, uh, uh, calculator, and, and stuff. So, yes, okay, so how about playing football? How about my friends? Uh, am I going to see them today or what? <laughs> and I get back home and I start, my father starts to, to, uh, to speak to me. Okay, so, huh, come on, school has already started, so you have to study. Mm -hmm. that, w that was when I was young, but in, in high school, <coughs> uh, I always, uh, you know, I li liked school because I, I wanted to play football. I, I like football very much. And mm -hmm. that, that was everything. School was, everything about school was playing football with my friends. <laughs> 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 I wasn't a good student, actually. <laughs> <laughs> If his parents are watching this, like, that's why his grades were so low. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing with soccer. Yes, yeah, uh, soccer. Let's clarify. It's not <laughs> football. It's soccer. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. So sweet. Uh, it's how we say it in Egypt, football. Mm. I, I know. It's how to say it everywhere. Yes, <laughs> except 
the States. <laughs> well, because our sport is is the real one. <laughs> oh man, it's unique. <laughs> I'll probably American you. Well, uh, agreed. So let's continue. <laughs> uh, go ahead, brother Elias. Uh, how was your school days back in the day? Uh, growing up in London. Are we no. talking seventies or? <laughs> <laughs> the seventies. Why, why, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing up in London, um, no one wanted to go to school, to be fair. Like, school, the first day of school was always, no, yeah. oh, I'm back at school now. There was no excitement. You know, cause it was, the things that were exciting were not related to school. Like Ahmed said, he liked to play football. Yeah. Uh, when we used to go to school, it was the day to, but the first day was always the day to show off. Where you got, you had your new mm. shoes or your new bag, or yes. it's a new day phone. of no, just like new phone, new yeah, gadgets. you know, just you show off a little bit. So that was really it. I mean, meet, meeting old friends, or if you come back from the summer holidays in, in London or in England, it's six weeks, and how long it is everywhere else? It's long over here. Um, but either way, so it was it was nice to see new old friends. But other than that, I mean, beginning of school or the school year was just. Mm bit of a drag, no one, <laughs> <laughs> no one actually wanted to go. <laughs> even if you liked it, you just had to be like, yeah, even, if, e yeah, even if you liked it, you secretly had to be like, nah, I hate it. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something funny about Egyptian yeah. like Because you know, uh, cause the, the teachers in school, they would say that the school is going to be the best time of your life. And everyone's like, I'll oh. oh, be quiet, man. But <laughs> when you actually leave school, you realise this is actually was like, yeah. there's no pressure whatsoever. Yes. You, you come out of school and you're into college or university, that's when start growing up and you yeah, got <laughs> responsibilities but before that it was just everything was real calm relaxed laid back mm -hmm. yeah Abdullah um, you wanted to add something? Uh, I want to add something like you know maybe you recognize this uh, Egyptian culture thing the first the first day of school is really important why because like you book your place so like it's a race once you just like I know like right like I don't know like you know it Ahmed right yeah. so, like once you like kicking off start all students as if they like school as if it's not real. They just like go around like the, the, their like kind of classes. They book for their p the places. The they place. look like kind of here, like cool guys. Like they book at the end, at like the you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an international thing. All yeah, the cool kids. Yeah. I don't know. Well. It's like it's a race mm -hmm. here, like a race, like a like a la rat race. I don't know how they call it, like, but like it's a race. Really, really cool. Like no, I but know. I knew my place. The last, the last disc. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was my place, really. That was my place. I liked it. Oh, man. That's not good. But, uh, <laughs> if we can come to you, you didn't get a chance to share some of your stories from school. Yeah, I, I was never at the <coughs> end. I was somewhere in the middle or the upper middle, but never in the last. But um, from African-American culture and, and, and uh, what you would call the urban environment, we don't call it that, but okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, for us, going to school, the first day of school was about the clothing. Like we didn't have uniforms; it was about the designer outfits. Mm -hmm. So it was about the it was about having your baseball cap. You know, depend upon what neighborhood you're from. It was to the left or to the right. Um, like the jackets and the, the matching outfits and the shoes had to be the in style, the Jordans or, or whatever was popular. <laughs> and and so it was a fashion show, and it was all about you know the girls liked you based upon what clothes you had. So, <laughs> and that's what really put you out in front of if you would would be in that upper echelon popular thing you know um, so I, I, I made out okay okay <laughs> um, but you know it, but some of us actually did care about academics you know um, um, I did my, my favorite subjects were social studies history um, science was okay. English, even though I teach it today, I, I never liked English. It, it, you're, just learning, you're just learning grammar, right? Mm -hmm. And um, math was always my worst subject. And today still is. If I can count from one to two, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, school, I, I remember, as a brother to my right said, he, he said that the teachers would say, this is the best time of your life. And um, I heard that a lot on the other side of the Great Pond, which is America. <laughs> and it, it's true, like, I heard that, and I would say, yeah, it was, it was a great time. I mean, there was no responsibilities, and you, you had the opportunity to meet a lot of people, and I still remember a lot of my teachers from those days, mm -hmm. who were really great people. Mm -hmm. yes. um, all right, now, since we got a feel of uh, our viewers, I mean, our uh, guests today, mm -hmm. uh, now we want to get into 
what are good ways in which we can plan our school year and you know and try to achieve as much as we can during the academic year so again let's start with Abdullah I want to speak a little bit serious now like because school unfortunately like uh, it depends on the, in the area it depends like where you're from and like where, where, which school which which teacher mm -hmm. and all these things and all your parents should know like all these things uh, they like this awareness I mean like they, they don't have this awareness of like school will not teach you everything mm -hmm. unfortunately like kids like they just like put the, the, their kids in, in, in school and like they, they, they think like they will teach them every single thing about their lives and like they just like he takes care of like of the money she takes care of I mean, food preparation cleaning and stuff and that's it so like preparing for for school uh, wasn't that like you know uh, I don't know. People think like just like you go to school, as you, as you said, like you should study. I will block you from like prevent you from doing anything fun uh, for the sake of like school to get like higher marks, like to get like to be an engineer, doctor, or whatever, like you know, position or like what's yeah, catching on these days, uh, and that's it. But real study, teaching them like the behaviors, manners, the the, the foundation of sciences, all the stuff like this, it doesn't happen. I mean, I, I'm always speak about my culture. It's not that popular here to be. To get ready and teach them how to learn. I mean, like you should learn how to learn. Yeah, it's not. This is not included, mm -hmm. unfortunately. That's that's yes, quite interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, very important point as well. Uh, yes, um, I, I I I I like what my brother said, but I I have uh, some addition. Um, the students here they always panic about um, about homework and about study, um, and you know they 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 find themselves there's a kind of uh, suddenly change. Hmm. Uh, a week ago. You used to play, and you, you, you used to, to pass the whole day entertaining yourself. And once you get into school, uh, you just leave everything. You leave that the, the playing, you leave that watching TV and everything, and, and you just focus on your, your lessons and you study your homework. Uh, this is a big problem that uh, you, you start like that with putting putting yourself in this in this, this <coughs> much pressure. This makes you um, uh, you know you're not you're not going to be good at, uh, at studying or. Uh, getting what, what what's inside the book, uh, so hitting the book from the very beginning is is really bad for our students. E okay, why not? We're not playing. So uh, the students in here in, in my culture, they, they they you know they they get back from school and they start to, to to study what they took at school, do the homework, and then the day is is up and then they go to bed, and at the weekend they start to revise. To revise, to review what was, uh, you know, the whole week around. Private courses. So yes, okay, you can can study, but don't forget that you, you get some time for playing, get some time for playing mm -hmm. sports and for watching TV. Yeah, right? it's, 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 a, not, it's, it's very, very not important to have a balance. That's a good point. Yes, very exactly. So it's not it's not that difficult at all. Yeah, and uh, that usually happens. Uh, you find these kids are playing throughout the whole summer and having so much fun. Then out of nowhere, when it's school time, everything is cut out, and it doesn't work that way. You need to, you know decrease the amount they're playing, the amount of TV they're watching before the school year <coughs> begins. So they fit into the school year and then when they're, once they're in the school year, you can't cut it all out completely. They need yeah. playing time. Mm -hmm. And school shouldn't be a place where it's just study, study, study. There should be activities, it should be fun for the, the children who want to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, Elias, what do you think about planning your year? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it really is dependent on the age of the, of yeah. the students. Mm -hmm. Talk about very young, it's, very, it's going to be very difficult. But for we're getting slightly older, maybe 15, 16. I think it's important to start thinking about the people who you're going to be studying with, you know, because it's important to have a good group of friends. You know, in school, you might have the kid that's really smart. I mean, you should befriend him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because he, he may be very smart in an issue that you're not too good with, and he maybe can explain things to you in a way a teacher couldn't. So I, th I think that's, that's crucial, actually. So we start to learn to take our subjects outside of the classroom mm. because unfortunately sometimes or the way it is in London or I'm pretty sure everywhere in the world when you're out of school there's no study yeah. there's none whatsoever but if we can actually create a way to make our s topics interesting like mm. Bilal mentioned that he likes history like he likes learning history in school so let's just say Bilal's in school and he's got a history lesson now, when he's outside of school, maybe there's a student who's good at history, so maybe Bilal can actually discuss history with him. Mm. That will open his eyes to the topic that much more. Now, now for us who came to Egypt um, wanting to learn about Islam, it's very easy to do that. Like, if I'm having a conversation with Bilal or with Arqam, you know, and it's about Islam, it's, I'm going to learn. But even though it doesn't feel like I'm actually <coughs> learning or 
you know, with Abdullah or Ahmed, it's the same thing. Like, so it's about discussing the topics in school outside of that, um, yeah. so, that environment, and you find that you will soak up things so much easier. Mm-hmm. But if you go, in with, if you go in with the mindset of I have to learn everything else in this book, and this is the way to do this and this way to do that, it can become very difficult. So me, I personally found that learning through other people, making it part of the actual culture, my culture, mm-hmm. I found that was a great way of you know increasing my knowledge without me even knowing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I also think like, for example, uh, making plans. So uh, this is generally for an older audience. Yeah. Obviously kids are a lot different. Yeah. Uh, the teachers and the parents would decide you know, study plan for them. But when once you're older in university, uh, in, in university, mm-hmm. then I mean, you need to be responsible for yourself, yeah. and then you need to make certain plans. So you'll have yearly goals. What do you want to complete by the end yeah. of the year? Mm-hmm. So obviously, you have your regular curriculum. What else do you want to do? How many books do you want to read? How much more do you want to educate yourself? Because mm-hmm. education is not only in school. Yeah. And each year, you need to see yourself grow. Uh, so I think it's important that you have a yearly goal and then divide that monthly. Mm. So each month, say for example, in the whole year you want to do 24 books. That means each month you need to be finishing two books, mm-hmm. reading by yourself. Uh, then weekly goals, and then just daily goals, what you're going to do today, what subjects do you have tomorrow, when are you going to discuss, like you said, Bilal likes history. We're going to keep going on Bilal likes history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like, Bilal likes history, well, he wants to join the history club. What day is that? But make a nice schedule, have everything planned out. So by the end of the year, when you look back in the beginning of the year, you're like, wow, I've, ac- I've accomplished so much. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I'm, I'm a different person than I was in the beginning of the year. Mm. What do you think, Bilal? Well, I, I had two main points. The first one is, like when, when I'm dealing with, with young children, for me it's about edutainment, mm-hmm. education and entertainment. Because to be honest with you, um, he, I, I love history, maybe he likes math, maybe he likes science, whatever. But uh, that's like three out of 15 children. They're going to be most of the other kids that only really care about cartoons mm-hmm. and, and milk and cookies, right? So. The thing is like how to cookies. keep them <laughs> <laughs> how to keep them engaged because at, the parents want the information in their brain <clears throat> right and you got to get it in there so how do you, how are you going to do it so for me uh, edutainment is finding innovative and fresh ways to educate children in an entertaining way to keep their attention mm-hmm. because it's very easy for them to lose focus and they're all over the place. Now that's that's for the young children to keep their focus. Is, et cetera, that, is et that an actual term or you pin that together yourself? No, I didn't do it. It's not it's <laughs> not a Bilal original, but I do have <laughs> some I can, I can give you guys. No, edutainment is two words. Uh, the first part is edu for education. Yeah. Second part is tainment for entertainment. Yeah. So we put those together. It's an American thing. And we put it, sorry, Britain. But anyway, <laughs> we put those things together. Uh, it's, it's not a word. It's just a term, to, uh, it's a term that uh, explains how to keep people engaged in what you're trying to give them. Because everyone just can't sit and listen to a lecture yeah, and someone yeah. talking, hello, we will open page five. Page five is titled. You're gonna you're gonna just jump, right? So, edutainment is is a, it can be edu- the the idea of edutainment can be for all ages from four to forty four to one hundred and four, right? It depends upon how you apply it. But now I'm mostly applying it to uh, kindergarten children mm-hmm. because that those are the ones where it is it is the, it is the most. Oh, you're writing that down, huh? Good man. Mm-hmm. It is the most important too, right? Now the other phase is when you have older people, uh, as you said before, they're already motivated because they're taking that class, right? Maybe I'm teaching English for adults, or maybe I'm in, in America teaching a, a high school class or seventh, eighth grade class. So what am I doing? Well, basically, my my point here is one to teach critical thinking, mm-hmm. how to help an individual to think for him or herself, right? And you also spoke about Well, a lot of learning happens outside of school. Listen, I'm mostly self-taught. I learned most of what I know outside of school. I just applied it and filled out the bubbles on a little book on on a test in school. So the thing for me is teaching people also how to research, where to take sources from. Wikipedia is not your source for everything, right? Mm -hmm. It really isn't. Um, What books to read? Who is a reputable author or, or, or a reputable publisher, right? So my thing is for older people, um, critical thinking and also how to research properly and compile information. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I also think for uh, older students as well, uh, like high school age students, mm-hmm. it's very important for teachers to also 
uh, encourage them to seek knowledge. So sometimes you'll have students that don't really want to learn, mm -hmm. but you need to show them the importance mm -hmm. and the benefits of learning and get them excited about it, get them interested in learning itself. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important as well, especially for high schoolers, because you'll have loads of people like Bilal said that are not interested. You know, you'll have a person here, a person there that likes history, that likes math, that likes science, but you'll mm -hmm. have students that are not interested. They're just there to play soccer. Mm -hmm. so yeah. <laughs> the biggest thing is making the subject applicable to the life of that student mm -hmm. because people always say and I, I hate math but I do yeah. but people always say well math how does trigonometry and algebra apply to my life I'm, so you have to teach them that well why is it applicable why is it relevant for you or science or or history etc like how does it apply to your everyday life that's one of the tricky things about about teaching mm -hmm. uh, Abdullah I know you want to say something but before you say anything we're gonna watch a short video so stay tuned how perfect my is and I praise If you want to get your students to follow your instructions, it stands to reason that you need their attention first. It's no use talking to them if they're not listening to you. Now that can be really hard to achieve with a tough group of students, a noisy group of students. So in this quick video, I'm going to go through five different ways of getting the attention of your students so that when you talk to them, when you give them your instructions, they're actually listening to you. Now some of these are applicable for older students, some are more suitable for younger students, and they might not all suit your particular teaching style, but they do give you something to think about, they're a good starting point. First one we're going to cover is noisemakers. And noisemakers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but the one I use when I'm doing workshops and when I'm teaching is a bugle horn. Now the bugle horn is effective for two reasons. One, it's quite loud, so it does get their attention. And the other, it's, uh, it's a little bit silly, it's a bit humorous. And that takes the sting out of getting their attention. Because if you are constantly shouting at them, telling them to look this way, listen to me, I want your attention, it kind of nags them. You, you get them down. They get annoyed. They get frustrated. They get sick of hearing you. So the noisemaker is a way of getting attention without you constantly shouting at them. And you can use different noisemakers. You can use cymbals. You can use shakers. You can use cowbells. You can use tambourines. Any kind of musical instrument or even just clapping. And you can assign a different noisemaker for a different phase of the lesson, such as the start of an activity or the end of an activity or to come to the front and sit around the board. Noisemaker is very effective for that. The second one we're going to look at is a routine. Now routines are incredibly effective if they're done right. If you teach your routines, if you reinforce them, if you embed them and make them habitual for your students, what you effectively do is you train them to respond in a certain way. Kind of like Pavlov's dogs, but in a positive way. I'll, I'll explain one of the routines I use so you can see what I mean. I'll assign the role of shusher, sh shusher to different members of a group. And it's their job to get the group quiet on my behalf, to, get, to do my job basically, getting their attention for me. So when I call shushers, the shushers will stand up and they will shush, shush the rest of the group. And a gentle hush tends to descend on the whole group. It's actually surprisingly effective. And the reason why it's so effective is the people I assign that role to tend to be the ringleaders in the group. They tend to be those strong personalities that need attention. They're the ones that are generally usually causing you the most problems. They're the ones that are always acting up and always arguing. The reason why they're doing that is because they need some form of empowerment. They need some form of attention. So you give them that attention in an appropriate way by giving them a responsibility. And it's surprising how often they, they do respond positively to that and they do act on your behalf. The other reason it's effective is because obviously with those people being the ringleaders, the other students naturally tend to follow them and do as they say anyway. So routine, that routine works really, really well. Another routine you might try is the hands up routine and you would explain to your students, when I put my hands up and you see me putting my hand up, that means it's time to stop talking. What I need you to do is put your hand up with your mouth closed and look this way. Now some students will see you straight away and straight away their hands will go up in the air and they'll be quiet and they might nudge their friends, he's got his hand up. Some students will be writing, busy or they might just be talking or they might just choose to completely ignore you. So you basically build in a consequence. The last person to have their hand up, then there's a consequence that follows. 
And you'll get some students who put their hands up and they carry on talking. Well, that's doubly insulting, so you're building a consequence for them as well. So routines, very, very effective. The next one is the visual reminder. And visual reminders, one of the simplest ones, is the traffic lights reminder. Now, this is a small version of the traffic lights. What you would have is much bigger cards, and you might want to cut them into circles so that they do actually look like traffic lights. But basically, it works like this. You've got green, and when the green card is up on the wall, that means noise levels are fine. Noise levels are perfectly acceptable. Carry on working. Wonderful. If noise levels get too high, then you might put a warning on the board, and that's your amber traffic light, or in this case yellow, because we haven't got an amber card. And when students see the amber card up, then they know it's time to be, be wary and start dropping noise levels a bit. But if they carry on, if they get too high, you explain to them that when the red card is up, as soon as that red card goes up, they have 30 seconds to stop talking and be looking this way. And we stop the activity and we start again from green once we've got them quiet. So that's one way of using visual reminders. And again, visual reminders just take, uh, take away your need to be using your voice all the time. Next we've got the unexpected. And the unexpected is absolutely guaranteed to get the attention of any group. Because it works like this. Your students are used to coming into the room and seeing things set out in a certain way. But what you do is you completely bamboozle them by setting things up in a totally different way. You might have some equipment set up, you might have a demonstration set up, you might have uh, all the lights off and some music playing in the background. You might have some props wrapped up in a bag or a box. You might even have some refreshments set out in the corner of the room. Your students are naturally inquisitive. Everyone is. And so as soon as they see this break in the norm, they want to know what's going on. What, what's all this about? What's going on? What's that for? What's that for? And that gives you the perfect time to say, I'll tell you as soon as you're quiet. And in their desperation to know what's going on, it's likely that they'll quieten each other down. Okay, the last one is the countdown, and it's probably one of the most effective and well-known ways of getting a group quiet. It's basically a routine, and you count down from 10 to 1 or 5 to 1, and on your way down, you're praising those who are doing it right, and you're explaining what they've got to be doing. Okay, so it would be 5, I need everyone packed up. You need to be sat down in your own seat, looking this way, with your books away, your equipment away, and all rubbish off the floor. Okay, fantastic, that table. You're doing it straight away, and that table. Thank you very much. 4, let's go. Okay, well done, this table. That's brilliant. I can see you picking all the rubbish up thank you very much three we're nearly there we're just waiting for this table to stop talking and get that rubbish off the floor thank you very much well done two nearly there all looking this way now bags on the top thank you very much one brilliant absolutely great okay five ways to get attention from a group of students Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that short and inclusive videos. Uh, the person in the video made some very interesting points about studying in classroom settings. Uh, so before we actually watch that video, our brother here, Abdullah, was going to uh, say something. So I'll yeah. let him try. I was speaking about the part he was um, mentioning regarding like, I don't like math, you like science, you like this, you like this. We're, we're different now. So we should know uh, what, what they want and like, we should put them, put them like, in focus groups. I do this. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, when I found like some students, they love like topic, mm -hmm. I put them into like kind of uh, a, a class, or, like put them into like more specialized thing. The yeah. second thing like we should know uh, more about like the learning style thing. Some students they learn like you know fast by visual things, and le some students like they learn by uh, doing like activities, like you know being active, interactive learning things. Some people like they learn like by just listening or like acting or like reading or writing. So we should know their learning style and put them together in focus groups, and like they they they, they, they will be more like more productive than this. Right. Uh, my way, I think like, this is. I, I actually agree methods. with the idea with the the focus group mm -hmm. where you divide the class by like for example, Bilal would have been in the history <laughs> focus group. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I mean that, that's very interesting, especially if you're <coughs> when it comes to teaching English to foreigners. Yes. If you have this sort of theme, the interest groups, and you know pe what they already enjoy, what subjects they already enjoy, and then they use words that are related to that subject. I mean, it helps them speak more, and mm. it helps them. Uh, go ahead. You want to yes. Uh, well, I, I, li I like that grouping students. Yeah. Grouping is very important for a teacher, and it's for a teacher. It's important for a teacher as well as to. Um, to to uh, to start with the students as a kind of icebreaker, mm. uh, to stay with the student and to, st to start to speak personally, face to face, uh, <coughs> to 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 befriend the student. Uh, what are the problems of the student? Uh, what uh, things he likes, things he doesn't like? 
uh, his, you know, his, his, favorite, his favorite kind of learning because we, we know that all of us, we, we have different styles of learning. Some people mm -hmm. like, you know, like watching, some people uh, like uh, listening. Uh, mm -hmm. They learn quickly by listening. Other people like, you know, moving around and, and sharing, participating in games. <laughs> so it, this, is, this is very important for a teacher. If you want to be successful and if you want to, mm -hmm. to do a great job with your students, you have to, you have to be with them as a friend Mm. Okay. That's, that's a very good point. You need to understand the students. That's yes, uh, mm. to, to know the, you know, to befriend them. It's very good for a student to come to the teacher and, you know, if he, ha if he has a problem with his family, okay, know that you are, you are very close, you are inside the student, your student's heart when he, come, when, when he comes to you and exp explains some problem with his father, some problem at home. So y here you know that you are very close to your student, so, you, you know, it, this encourages you to... Uh, to be with him and to do your best mm. to teach him something. Man, that's really personal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's personal. Well, it, okay, it, it, but at the same time, gonna, yeah. I was going to say because in in London it's uh, it's very different. You can't really have a personal relationship with a student. Yeah. That's why yeah. it, as uh, teachers we're taught to be friendly, but not to make friends with the students. But it, 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 it's not it's not personal. I yeah. mean, <clears throat> you know. Uh, what I, what when I think a student loves is, you, yeah. What I think he means is to understand, trust. yeah, exactly. to understand yeah. and to understand how the student learns. So yeah. by by observing them, you can see some students learn better visually, yeah. While others would just read something and understand it and really understand good. So you away. can give this person material. You can uh, give this person extra videos he can watch at home, he can yeah. log on to certain websites. I, I think what hit us was the fact when he said, well, if a student was coming, you're, oh, my father this, and it was the, the personal life issue. I guess he was saying, he's from Britain, I'm from America, and one of the problems is, like in, 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 in our countries, there's a lot of issues with uh, haram things going on between teachers and students of, of any ages, of any groups, and anywhere. Wow. And um, it, it's also a liability issue and things happen and also lies are, are spread, rumors are spread that they harm the credibility of the teacher. And so for us, we, we try to keep hands off. off. Like for me personally, I don't like anyone to physically touch me. Uh, even, especially the, um, the children, like if a child, you know, they like you, you may sing a little song for them, the ABC song or anything. And they like you and they want to give you a hug and say, uh, you know, these things. Me, I'm like, no, don't touch me, no physical contact, or any, I don't want to know your personal business, what your mother said last week, and your father <laughs> this, none of that, you know, it's liability, you know, and I like to keep myself um, above reproach. I, I do understand what you're saying in regards to, um, it, it's a cultural thing, you know, because on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, we frown upon that. Okay, well, that's, that, that's right, it may be too personal, but... It's very good when a student comes to you and you know and, and tells you about about some of, of his problems. You know, the, here you, you know that you, there's someone who loves you. The student loves you very much, and when a student loves his teacher, okay, this makes it better for, for him to learn more, and you know to, to learn better and, and, and in a quicker way. Clearly, I can see two different cultures. Yeah, yeah, cultures. yeah, I, see, yeah. I see the mindset here. I don't want you to love me. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and growing up in the U.S., I've you know it's the same thing. You can't get too close with students. Yeah. None of that. But I can see the cultural difference where you know he's saying, well, "What's wrong with that? What do you mean? It's, it's good for the students to like you." Well, maybe I'm too friendly. To show, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm too friendly. Man. I think it's because <laughs> you were getting beat up in maybe school, then. and now you want to love you. Yeah, and you're too tough. <laughs> uh, which kind of leads me to uh, the next thing I wanted to get into was to figure out what are some of the obstacles that students uh, of all ages could face. Uh, during the school years and how can we overcome these obstacles or how can people who are watching this uh, find ways to overcome these obstacles? Go ahead. Uh, Saying I love you. That's <laughs> 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 a major <laughs> obstacle. <laughs> um, or to, to, to actually learning or? Yeah, to learning or just get in the way of their studies or, you know, uh, make them want to drop out of school, yeah. things like this. I think um, one of the great obstacles to learning is um, not planning our time effectively. And... Um, you know, so far in the show today, we've been discussing a lot of, you know, terms and situations where the student actually wants to learn or he might find learning easy. But when something's not going in, mm -hmm. sometimes a student can just want to leave everything. And he gets frustrated. He gets frustrated. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe in this situation, students need to be very open. If they don't understand something, they need to say, look, sir or miss, or I don't understand this, could you explain this again? Because sometimes it can be very embarrassing mm -hmm. to say in a public saying, I don't understand, mm. you know, 
Or if they don't want to say it in the class, maybe after lesson, go and speak to the teacher and say, look, I'm struggling with this. I need you to explain this. Or, you know, so we don't want to leave our lessons not mm -hmm. understanding what happened. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, so it's important for the teacher also to make sure that every student mm -hmm. understood, understands what's happening. So, for example, when I was learning about teaching, we would always try to get to the, the students to give us the answers rather than give the answers. So rather than saying 2 plus 2 equals 4, say, what does 2 plus 2 equal? And then you get the students to, to give the answers rather than give them the information. Yes. You know, I, I think that's important. Try making sure the student is comfortable. Mm -hmm. To one, make mistakes is important because mm -hmm. we learn by making mistakes. Mm -hmm. But also making a student comfortable or making us comfortable to ensure that we understand the topic before mm -hmm. we go on to other, other, other topics. Mm. That's uh, actually our, our yeah, session. Sure. Uh, I'm teaching, I'm training actually, and as a trainer, like I read their faces, I read like you know what they understand, they understood this or that. Like I can see like the faces, like someone like oh yeah, I get it. Someone like like no idea what you're talking about. Mm. So we we must like uh, what, what what Ahmed is speaking about. Like I'm doing something called like uh, coaching sessions with them, like 15 minutes after the class. Like I'm taking one or two, sit down with them, telling them about my feedback, and like you know, um, like I make a profile sure for this, idea. and like they, they, they get like too friendly, and like mm -hmm. they, they speak about anything. Sometimes like we speak, uh, sometimes like they don't speak English at all, so I encourage them to speak about any experience they have. It could be a personal thing, mm -hmm. at home, at school, or work, or anything. But like mm -hmm. I'm, I need to measure and like see and like place or like a placement test for you, like see like you know which level you are, like you know how did you improve or not, stuff stuff like this. So you should kind of uh, read their their minds and mm -hmm. check like if they did they get it, get it or no, and you should kind of make a follow up. That's what we need, like the following up thing. Like I mean, but kids also get good at poker faces, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially yeah. American kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you can you can say something, but like everybody understand it. Like, yeah, of course I understand. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, that's, uh, but even that question, so in this even culture, that question. Though, you should never ask, if you're a teacher, never ask you, do you understand? Exactly. Yeah. Because that's they're going to say yes. Who's going to say that? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. But, Who's going to say no to But you? it's so <laughs> easy, <laughs> it's so easy to get, like, you know, the students who didn't, they don't get anything like this culture. I'm teaching students, like, mostly Egyptians, and, like, some of them, like, were, like, Japanese or, like, Koreans or, like, uh, uh, Bangladesh, like, was Japanese and, and Koreans. They just, like, look, like, the same. <laughs> But I, I'm confused. I don't know what they understand or no. They're perfect students, and they, they, and learn, they, they get they it learn right. Discipline and respect. Exactly. In, in and they get it right. So like I'm confused now. Egyptians, like I know, and they, they they know anything. Like you know, just like smile and look at you. Like they they look smart when like they, they don't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> they look they look they look they look so bad. <laughs> but like uh, I was facing this. So like you should kind of know how to read their faces. Read their like kind of. You don't you don't say like you understand me. Experience. Yeah, I understand you. Next point. Mm -hmm. No. Ask them. Maybe like kind of try to Constant pick on question. someone. Like try to like if you if you're kind of suspicious about someone, you didn't get it. Like just ask them a question, stuff like this, and like re and like explain it again. I do this always. It, it works with me. I think one important thing is the class dynamic between the students themselves. Because sometimes one of the biggest problems you can face in teaching is there's somebody among the students who is blocking the others from learning. So you have to identify <laughs> the problem. Oh, that was you. That was you. That was you. me. That was it. Well, sometimes. Depending on what day of the week it was. But, but, um, it, but so you have to identify who the problem is. That doesn't mean the answer is not to completely isolate them. You may need to put them in another place. But if it's a child, you don't want to completely isolate them because, they're, they will, because they want attention, they will only increase. Sometimes it's best to bring them closer to you, to you and give them more attention because that's what they need. Maybe they're not getting attention at home and school is the only place they can get it. For adult students, I, I've even had problem students from adults. They talk too much, they joke too much, they don't want to listen. And so uh, what they need the most is a talking in the corner and letting them know there's there are some pressures on them to improve, and that usually works with adults. Here, here's what I do. Like it's really, really nice. It works with me every time. When I find a troublemaker, for example, like we have a rule, like no Arabic in the class. And like this person, like no English in the class. Like he speaks Arabic all the time. Like he, he is, like bothers people, prevents them from doing anything. So I just like turn him into a real friend to me, and I make him like, hey, 
I, I just like do coaching thing and I encourage and motivate him, like push him to speak and all these things. And at the same time, I assign to be the class leader. Like if somebody speaks <laughs> in Arabic, he takes money from him, like stuff like this. So he's the one who's helping me now, not like kind of doing this. So you turn, mm-hmm. like Powder. not an enemy, but like you turn him into mm-hmm. a real friend to you. And it works. It works with me. Like some people that they couldn't do anything and now they're, they're, they're the best. Mm-hmm. I love doing this. Like encouraging them and like uh, knowing what to do with, with the troublemakers, with people who sleep, with, with the people who work really introverted and that they cannot speak. So like you deal with people in a very like different styles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this also works for children. It's actually, it's actually I, I try that too with, with some of my kindergarten students. And uh, it's actually a good point. Um, when I was younger, they didn't employ that. They just beat us. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, so this is some new 21st century techniques that you learn in college. And it, it actually is a, is a very good thing. It's taking their energies and turning it around on them in a positive way. And I, I think that's very important because if you notice, like, the students that get isolated, you know, they, they don't automatically like learning because you're isolating them there. I mean, it's not like they go to the corner and sit there mm-hmm. and say, what did I do wrong to sit in this corner? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's still And the behavior children. comes worse. It's, the behavior yeah, exactly. becomes worse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the teacher's world. job and responsibility to find a way to encourage the student how to, yeah. how to learn and how to overcome these obstacles. Uh, if we can go to you guys, you guys didn't share some of the obstacles. We, we were just commenting on their obstacles. So. <laughs> uh, some obstacles of what? Like? Uh, some things that can get in the way of a student planning his year, uh, a student studying during his year, and things that can make him drop out of school, things that can lose his interest in studying and in actually finishing the year. Well, <coughs> I think it depends on the stage mm-hmm. as well. Um, but the, the, the most difficult of all is that teenagers, you know, uh, for teenagers, their the life is they they have you know different different things they 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 care about like maybe uh, they 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 have s- something like emotional problem, um, <coughs> especially when when he he likes some some sport and uh, he has a hobby and it it takes him away from from his study and from his work. Uh, so dealing with teenagers and th- their problems, this is the most difficult stage. Um, and I think it's the responsibility of, of both the brother and, and the teacher is to identify the problems and, and to start to deal with them, to encourage them. Okay, uh, y- you, can, you can do something, okay, but in this way. Uh, but at the same time, don't forget that you have, you have lessons and you have homework to do at home. That's for teenagers. To dealing with teenagers, this is the most difficult thing for both parents and for the teacher. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Abdullah? What well, well, I was saying that um, the biggest thing I see that blocks them from getting anything from school is that they don't know the rule of the school and the, their rule towards like kind of getting and seeking knowledge. I mean, like I joined this course, I joined this college, I joined this department. What they will do to me? They will change what? And what, what, what are like my responsibilities and my rules, my like kind of steps and goals and all these things to get what I want, what I want in the, at the end. I want to be educated and like get a certificate and that's it. You'll get a certificate of attendance, basically. Like uh, if you're taking a course with me or stuff like this. But what we do is like kind of is outside based on you first. I mean, like you should know the, the, your vision. We like this. Like, you know, what do you want to do in your life? I uh, want to get this, yeah. So school will help you this 10%, 20%, 90%, but you have to do, uh, like you have to work on yourself at the same time. So we lack of planning. Mm. If you, because we, we plan, the plan is no plan. And if you fail to plan, they say what you plan <coughs> to fail. Yeah. Exactly. I think one thing to remember also, uh, for those who are teaching anywhere from kindergarten to high school is that you must have a relationship with the parents. Mm. They must know you. You must introduce yourself to them and have an open path of communication to be able to speak about whatever problems or, or even successes, whatever the case may be, with their, their child slash student. Um, I think a lot of things happen, uh, especially in the West, where you're teaching the children something or even, even in the East, you're teaching the, ch- the children something, but it's not being reinforced at home. And a lot of parents don't realize that they are the greatest teachers and the fir- first and foremost teachers of their children. And if what we're doing from 9 to 3 is not being reinforced at home, not- nothing we say or do in the classroom will make any difference or will stick. It'll be like they, they put their money into a private school or into an national school for nothing. And that's one of the biggest things. People think that you, you, you'll just take your child, get that child to a school, 
They'll whip a magic wand, fix them however they want it to be. They'll go home to whatever environment that they have, and it, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, mm -hmm. one thing I can tell you is, you can walk into a home before you meet the student and before you meet the the, the, uh, the, the parents. If you just walk into their home, you will know what kind of student you will have. How? I'll say very quickly. If you walk into the home, and the most prominent object in that home is the TV, you're going you're to have a problem. If you walk into the home and you see a library, uh, and some kind of studious environment where there's some kind of learning going on at home, then you're going to have a good student. So, those th so you have to have a, a partnership with the parents mm -hmm. to work out problems. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time uh, for this conversation in this episode, so I want to thank you guys for joining me here Happy on to Let's see you. Talk. Yes. And dear viewers, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I just want to quickly rephrase, or not rephrase, I just want to re-say what Brother Bilal said. It's very important that the parents support their kids, because no matter what the teachers are doing from 9 to 3, when they come home, if the parents are not giving an, a supportive environment, and a environment in which the students or, or their kids are willing to learn and, and just when they come home they just leave everything that they learned in school and are, the parents are not looking into what they're doing then the student's not going to go anywhere so it's very important for the parents to take uh, or to be involved in their student or uh, their children's lives uh, other than that I hope to see you guys next week and until then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Great.